So what is next? Uh, next, I am going to uh, define the continuity of preferences. And uh, I'll argue, I'm not going to... So this was, you know, the showing that uh, lexicographic uh, binary relation is complete, transitive, and reflexive. Uh, so that was a formal proof, right? So what I gave you is not an informal proof, it's a formal proof. So if I, if I w was asking you prove that lexicographic preferences is in fact transitive, that would be the formal proof or the formal answer for this question. Uh, so it wasn't an informal. Uh, well, what about continuity? Well, uh, well for continuity, uh, b because the definition for many might be uh, you know, already too complicated, I am going to make an informal argument. Um, and because we have a time limitation, I'm not going to give you the formal proof of it. But sometimes the informal argument is exactly what I ask, all right? So informally, you need to uh, explain why a preference relation is continuous or not continuous, for example. So here's the formal definition of a continuity. A preference relation um, on X is continuous Obviously here, I am assuming that X is a metric space with a proper metric. So these are concepts I talked about in my topology uh, uh, lecture videos. So if you haven't looked at them, please go back and check. So a preference relation on X, uh, which is a metric space, is continuous. The reason for this, by the way, the continuity and, and stuff like that cannot be defined on an arbitrary space. It has to be a, a metric space. So it's a continuous preference relation if for any a, b in x there are some neighborhoods n epsilon a and uh, delta b. So remember the definition of neighborhoods from, again, the, uh, the math review, the topology. If you don't, please go ahead and, and check them out. Uh, so there are some neighborhoods around uh, A and B such that uh, for every X in neighborhood A and and y in neighborhood b um, we have oh okay i forgot something i'm gonna add it to this definition x is strictly uh, better than uh, y all right so this definition is not complete because here i had to say the following a preference relation on x is continuous if for any a b in x with a is strictly better than B. There are some neighborhoods around A and B such that for every X in the neighborhood of A and for every Y in the neighborhood of uh, B, we have X is strictly better than Y. Okay, um, that's it. First, uh, I, I, I sort of mentioned this in lecture videos. But what do we mean by an alternative A is strictly better than B? Uh, well, that means A is at least as good as B and negation of B at least as good as A. Okay, um, that's it. So uh, what does that mean? That means basically I strictly prefer A to B. So. Uh, it's not like greater than or equal to, right? It's strictly greater than. So therefore, A is uh, at least as good as B, but I am killing that actually B can be equal to A or indifferent to A. So remember the definition of indifference. A is at least as good as B. B is at least as good as A means A is indifferent to B. So I'm killing this indifference. And so therefore, I define it formally, a strict relationship this way. Okay. So, for example, if we look at the lexicographic preferences, uh, consider one zero versus one half, uh, one half. So, one zero is strictly at least as good as one half, one half. Why is that? Well, because the first component is strictly higher. 
So it's at least as good as. And the thing is, one half, one half is not at least as good as one zero, meaning not B at least as good as A uh, is, is false. So therefore, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not B at least as good as A is true. Uh, the, if you ignore the negation, this part is false. So therefore, uh, it is a strict, uh, uh, strict part of the lexicographic preference relation. Okay. So what is, first of all, what is the intuition behind this? If you uh, remember uh, the definition, well, the intuition behind continuity is the following. If you have two alternatives, A and B, um, let's suppose they're very close to one another, okay? So, I mean, close to meaning, uh, like these are vectors, right? So each vector is an alternative. So consider two vectors which are very, very close to one another in my Euclidean metric space. And so it looks like these two alternatives are almost the same, right? I mean, the numbers are very close to one another. Uh, but so what does that mean? That means uh, one alternative, so nevertheless, if one alternative is strictly better than the other, uh, y when you are around A, all right? So around A, meaning if I, if I give you another alternative X, which is very close to A, and another alternative Y, which is very close to B, um, well, then you should still say, I, I prefer X to Y. You shouldn't switch all of a sudden Y is better than X, all right? Um, and again, here, the, the idea is that I am offering you something very close to A, very close to B, all right? So think it this way. So the real numbers, right? 5 is strictly higher than 4, real numbers. So what I'm giving you x, which is very close to 5, like 5.001, 5 and then something very close to 4, 4.001. 4 Can I still say this is greater than this? Oh yes, x, exactly. What about uh, something less, 4.9999? Is this still greater than 4.001? Yes, it is. All right, so you got the idea. So the same thing should happen for my preference relation. You shouldn't immediately switch uh, or sort of change your preferences or your preferences shouldn't jump in that sense. Here, what you should be very careful about when why am I looking at X's and Y's very close to A and B? Well, because remember this says uh, there are some neighborhoods. It doesn't say for every neighborhood, right? For example, uh, you know, one neighborhood around five is like um, three, right? It's the uh, two neighborhood around, uh, I don't know, four neighborhood around five. Another neighborhood around four is like, for example, one neighborhood around four is like, you know, five is in one neighborhood around four, so N one four. So five is in N one four. So delta is one. So here, three is an element of and for example, four, uh, five, right? So the four unit neighborhood around five. So can I still say three is greater than five? No, of course not. Why is that? Well, because now you are uh, too far from your original points, uh, A and B. Uh, I don't want that. I want you to be very close to A and B. And so therefore there are some neighborhoods around A and around B so that uh, so th that means this should be very, very small, right? So when it is very big, obviously this is not going to hold. But when it is very, very small, so if I can find a very small neighborhood around A and B, and if I still pick numbers from this uh, small neighborhood, uh, the, the sign shouldn't be uh, different. Right? That's, that's the idea. So hopefully that was clear. And now let's argue, I mean, when I say argue, I'm just going to give you one example. Why? This, the, the, the lexicographic preferences are not continuous. So, uh, lexicographic preferences are not continuous. So, lexicographic preferences are continuous if it is P, I am basically uh, proving that not P, all right? So how can I prove that? Well, we didn't really talk about it uh, because, you know, uh, in the propositional logic, I don't know what it uh, corresponds to. But when you want to show 
um, uh, sort of they disprove something, uh, the, the easiest way is uh, show a, a counterexample. Counterexample. All right. Uh, well, so remember, a preference relation on X is continuous if for any A and B in X, satisfying blah, blah, this, the, the, this has to hold. So lexicographic preferences are not continuous means there exists some A and B such that the, the rest of the argument doesn't hold. So if you can show one A and B um, such that A is strictly preferred to B, but the rest of the arguments is not true, well, then you're done. You show that this lexicographic preferences are not continuous. All right? So here I'm going to pick just one uh, A and one B for that matter. Um, so assume that this A and B are very close to one another, but in order to you know, uh, draw uh, neighborhoods, I'm going to put them uh, far apart. So let's consider, well, I mean, they don't have to be, right? Let's see. So let's say my A is this, one, one, all right? Uh, the, the, the unit uh, corner. Um, well, it's, it's a horrible because my mother's space is one one. So let's pick something else. Uh, one one is not gonna work, uh, trust me. One health, one health. That's definitely a better choice. One health, one health, all right? So the first component, one health. Second component, one health. This is my A. It should be at least as good as B, right? So let's suppose B is... Um, this guy, okay, this guy, this is B, and B is basically this, one half, one uh, quarter, A is one half, one half. So uh, is A it strictly preferred to B? Yes, it is. Why is that? Well, because the first components are the same, but the second component, this is 0.5, this is 0.25. So the second component is higher. Therefore, A is at least as good as B. But if you compare B and A, B is not at least as good as A. So therefore, A is strictly uh, uh, preferred to B. Okay, very well. Now, uh, think about any neighborhood around A. So once again, uh, please go back to the topology uh, uh, videos uh, sort of a, for the picture or the vis visualization of the uh, uh, neighborhoods in a two-dimensional space. A, a neighborhood around A and a neighborhood around B is going to look something like this. You can obviously make these circles smaller and smaller and smaller and this B also smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, so remember I should be able to find one neighborhood around A and one neighborhood around B. So it doesn't have to work for all A neighborhoods, but just one is enough. But what I'm gonna argue that you cannot find uh, any neighborhood around A and B where for every X in the neighborhood around X uh, uh, and for every Y in the neighborhood of uh, around B, X is gonna be uh, strictly preferred to Y. This is not gonna hold. Why is that? So let's pick this neighborhood, okay? And so for every X here, must be strictly preferred to every Y here. Is it the case? Um, no, how so? Well, let's pick, for example, X here, okay? Uh, so this is my X. And where's gonna be my, I'm sorry, uh, the other way. I'm gonna pick X here. So let's pick X here. So this is my X and I'm going to pick my Y here. So this is my Y. Okay, so I did not give any specific values. All right. Um, but the thing is here, what matters is uh, the second component, the second uh, uh, coordinates of X and Y are different, but who cares? The first component, I mean Y1 and Y2, and this is x1 and x2. If you look at the second component, y1, it's sort of higher than one half. And the first component of x, I'm sorry, did I say second? So the first component of y, meaning y1, is higher, strictly higher than one half. 
and the first component of x is strictly less than one half. So that means uh, the y is beating x on the first dimension, hence y is strictly better than x. But however, remember, I must have x is strictly better than y. Huh. So you know what? Um, this does not hold for every x and y. So I can find one x and y where the preference relation will be reversed. But the question is, remember here, I fixed those balls. Like maybe they're going to be very, very small. All right, so this is, these are too big. Can I find the smaller balls? Well, of course you can. So imagine, I'm not going to draw it. Imagine you squeeze this ball and it becomes very, very small, but nevertheless includes elements other than A, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't be ball. So it, regardless of how small it is, there's going to be elements, numbers here, so there are x's, and regardless of how small the ball around be, there are going to be elements on, to the right of one half, y's. So that means regardless of how small these balls get, I can always find some x and some y where y is better than x. All right, so therefore, remember the definition of continuity says, look, a preference relation is continuous if for any a, b in x. Well, I did not prove my argument for any, but who cares? Remember, I am trying to prove the negation of this argument, meaning I'm trying to prove that this lexicographic preferences is not continuous. So therefore, uh, if the statement says for any a, b, it is okay to prove my argument for some a and b. All right, so I just picked one A and one B. There are some neighborhoods, it says, well, I just argued that for any neighborhood you take, this is not gonna happen. It should be the case that every X in the neighborhood around A and every Y in the neighborhood around B must preserve the order of the preference relation, meaning X should be at least as good as Y. But you know what, I just showed that. It has to hold for every x and y, but you know what? Some y's are actually strictly better than some x's. So therefore, um, if this is the p, the, the, uh, the, uh, the lexicographic preferences are continuous, I wanted to prove not p, and actually I sort of proved not p, okay? Uh, so this is how we show that lexicographic preferences are not continuous. Um, I hope that was clear.